The biggest story this year in Israel outside the coronavirus was the change of government, with Benjamin Netanyahu ousted from the prime minister's office after a dozen years. Now, one lawmaker who managed that transition especially well was Sharon Heskel, who jumped from Netanyahu's Likud party and re-entered the Knesset and the new government as a member of Gidon Saar's New Hope faction. Now, in her role as head of the Parliament's Education Committee, she is taking a prominent uh, part in the sensitive issue of how to handle the coronavirus pandemic in school. And this week, she led a push successfully against the health ministry's recommendation that all students in high infection red zones be forced to stay at home and learn from there. Haskell also leads the legislative effort to legalize cannabis use. But that initiative, like many other reforms, is facing headwind in this divided government. Well, joining us now to speak on both those issues is Sharon Haskell of the New Hope Party and, as I mentioned, chair of the Education, Culture and Sports Committee, joining us for from Kfar Saba. Sharon, thanks for joining us again. Uh, let me just start by asking you, the health ministry feels that the coronavirus situation in the schools is concerning enough that all students in red zones should learn from home. You feel differently. Why, why is that? Well, uh, we've seen in uh, the last two years, our children uh, were studying at home from Zoom uh, for almost a year, a year and a half. Um, the toll that they suffered from it and the backlashes, I mean, the results, we see it now. In the recent few weeks and few months, there's been an, a huge increase uh, in violence in schools among teenagers. There's been sexual uh, harassments and attacks in schools by teenagers. Um, uh, I had in my committee... Um, some of uh, the most experienced uh, psychiatrists uh, in Israel, including from some of the most uh, important mental health hospitals here in Israel. And they're saying something so concerning. Uh, the teenagers and children are now in a backlog. They're in a waiting list, waiting to be hospitalized in their uh, sections, in the mental health sections. Uh, waiting to get a treatment for uh, problems like uh, depression, uh, uh, anger management, anorexia, uh, uh, um, anxieties, and so many more uh, uh, issues. So when you decide to break that frame of education, uh, you know, a daily routine of social encounters and studying uh, and, and leave them at home, sometimes without any kind of uh, parental supervision. It has a, a serious effect on our children and our teenagers. So uh, knowing that uh, and having all the experts coming and explaining us that the kids did not come back as they were before from the closure, uh, we put a target uh, in my committee, and me as chairing the committee, we put a target as uh, uh, maintaining the school routine and the framework of the education system, uh, a frontal one, uh, as much as possible, as long as it's not in danger the health of the children. And last week, we had so many uh, great ideas on how to continue studying uh, in a frontal way, uh, arriving to schools and keeping that routine uh, while uh, keeping the children safe and healthy. And I have to say that the Ministry of Health was also very open to hear that. And within 24 hours, they brought to my committee a completely different um, 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 right, arrangement or uh, a plan. plan. Yeah. yeah. All right, yes, and I know it's going to be reviewed. I believe you're going to, uh, the week after next, look at the figures and make other decisions there. I want to move on to maybe uh, another prominent role you play is maybe the leading lawmaker pushing for the legalization of uh, cannabis. But a lot of people, again and again, we see in this government, this ideologically diverse, divided government, what people see is some needed reforms, be it on religion, for example, uh, in religious observance, be it on legalization of cannabis, uh, the government unable to pass legislation. Could you uh, address that in general and also how it relates to your own push on the cannabis bill? So uh, 
Well, I don't know if all the viewers understand, because uh, politics in Israel are very different, and the parties are formed in a very different manner. Um, and um, uh, the coalition that we have today is so diverse from so many different fractions and religion and backgrounds and, uh, 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 and ethnicities and, uh, and, and, you know, ideology, right and left on, uh, on, on security and foreign affairs issues, on economical issues. So there's a lot of disagreement. But one thing that we actually are capable of doing, and that's what's working really well, is coming to compromises and bringing things that are so important uh, that haven't been done for years and should have been done so many years ago in order to advance Israelis and advance the economy and, uh, 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 and, 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 you know, and bring stability after two years of a political mess. Um, and I'm very proud in that. I mean, I think it brings hope to the citizen of Israel when they see us sitting together around a table and able to make decisions together. Well, are they going to be able um, to make a decision on your, your cannabis uh, bill? Yeah, so with, with the cannabis, obviously, New Hope Party um, uh, put it uh, as an elections uh, promise, and we brought it into the coalition agreements. So uh, the parties are committed to those agreements as well. And obviously, there's a big uh, issue with Ra'am, which is a very religious, a Muslim religious party. Uh, they refuse to vote on this bill. But I have to say, Kalev, um, in the last government, which was headed by Netanyahu, and we had the ultra-Orthodox, the Jewish ultra-Orthodox party, they refused to vote on my bill of cannabis as well. And I had to form somewhat of a coalition with the opposition in order to pass that bill. Um, the government dismantled itself uh, a few months later, and I wasn't able to finish this bill. But this is the same situation now. And so I hope that there'll be three brave people from the opposition that, by the way, made that a promise of election of their party as well and vote with us in order to finally uh, bring legalization of cannabis here in Israel. I, I, I don't expect you to give me the names, but I'm going to ask you, do you have three names in mind in the opposition right now that you think may be willing to break with this very tight uh, opposition discipline to vote on the cannabis issue? Well, I, I don't know if they'll be willing, but I know what they made as a promise to their voters, and their voters voted by those promises, and members who promised legalization to the voters are like Amir Ohana and Galit Distal and Ophira Kunis and Gila Gamliel and, and Benjamin Netanyahu. He promised that as well. And so I think at the end of the day, uh, citizens look on what we're doing. They're looking on our actions. Uh, and I think that trust between us and the public is one of the most important things. Uh, and I think that there will be enough public pressure uh, within a couple of months in order for them to vote together on this bill. So I'm, uh, I'm going to ask you for your New Year's resolution for the year. Obviously, you believe the cannabis bill is going to happen. Give me at least one other you think reform this government's going to be able to do in the coming year, briefly. So, uh, okay, so um, we are going to decriminalize uh, cannabis here in Israel. Uh, we found a way, uh, the Minister of Justice and the Vice uh, um, <clears throat> Prime Minister, Gidon Saar, through the Justice Minister, uh, has actually just signed a letter starting a chain of reaction in order to decriminalize the offense of using cannabis here in Israel. And that's going to be a huge uh, uh, success for us as well uh, in right. advancing in, you know, a reform like that. Okay. And I believe that will happen within a few weeks, uh, up to two months. Okay, well, we'll, um, um, we'll have to end there. But that, so that would that, be my new, my new resolution. <laughs> okay, well, that would, that would be a, certainly be a step in the direction of legalization. Uh, uh, thank you for we wish you a happy new year. Uh, uh, new thank Hope will make a member of and parliament. Happy New Year's to all the viewers of I24. Thank you, Sharon Hesco. Thank you for that.